Hey everyone, this is Sam, and welcome to the channel. Today is going to be episode 1 of our Elden Ring Starter Class Guide. In this episode, we're going to break down one of the best starting classes for you, and that is the Prisoner Class. We're going to show you just how effective he is with all sorts of combat advantages he has, and all the versatility, his starting skills, and the way you can level him up will bring you, where you can actually use magic and melee both very effectively. And we guarantee that by the end of this episode, you're going to have a very firm idea on just what makes the Prisoner Starter Class so good and how you can use it for yourself so you can start having fun with Elden Ring with effective gameplay and also enjoy taking down bosses the right way. So if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing and adding us a like. Also, if you want to see more Elden Ring or RPG videos from us, just click on the link in the playlist in the description below and also the card above and you'll find all of our content. And if you would like to see more of these starter class build breakdown videos with combat and gear, just get this video to 250 likes and we'll make more of these for you guys as quickly as possible. Thank you. So now let's take a look at the prisoner build in detail. Now starting off, your character status are as such, and you can see his stats are actually very well balanced across the board, and the gameplay is actually going to play out that way also. So the footage you're about to see is actually from a level 16 prisoner kind of starting out build, but you can see we kept the attribute points very balanced, and the gameplay is going to reflect that. So in terms of equipment, you will start off with the thrusting sword, and that's the one we'll be using, and this is your main melee weapon. Now using this one, the R1, your first selection, is the quick thrust attack. And this is very good. You can see it's very fast animation play out and you can actually get free hits in for pretty high damage in a short span of time. So that's gonna make it very useful. And your secondary attack, so your R2 attack with the thrusting sword, this is gonna give you a sweep animation. This one not only hits harder, it's a bit slower, but this has the effect of being able to hit more than one enemy or more than one area. So it's got a good coverage, so that's also very good. And the two of these can actually be stacked together to be a very helpful combo. So you can go do the R2 sweep into the R1 quick thrust. So you can see I initially started off with the sweep there and I can immediately transition into the thrust. So that's a very small amount of frames but a high amount of damage. So this really synergizes well with the dexterity buff or the ability of the prisoner class. And the R1 quick thrust is also great versus larger enemies. This is especially true if you can find the enemy blind spots, which they all have, and then you can just quick thrust away after you dodge into an area where you can expose them. As you can see me do quite a bit of damage there while being pretty much completely safe. And I can do this in a short amount of time, so I can dodge again, all of it together. Great dexterity play overall. Now, in his offhand, he actually, the prisoner, has the glint stone staff. And with this one is where your magic abilities kind of shine because prisoner also got decent intelligence. So starting out your glintstone staff is going to come with the magic glint blade. And with this one, you can cast it by tapping uh, L1. And you can see there's a delay after you cast. And then these magical swords are going to shoot out on what you have logged onto. And these are homing swords. So they will chase the target down. And three of them did 834 damage. And that was relatively safe. I didn't do anything. I cast it free, almost at a thousand damage. And now I go back to my dodging and my quick press attack. And the two synergizes really well. The intelligence stacks with your dexterity. And if you know how to place these spells properly, where you place it behind the enemy, bait him into chasing you to melee, now they have to deal with the magical spells at the back and your sword at the front. And those two magical swords in that short span of time, 417 damage. And I can repeat this process and it really puts him, especially boss fights, in a very bad situation. This is my go-to setup for boss fights and you can see that's a lot of health gone with four magical blades. But one key thing about the spell you have to understand, it goes for what you target. So if you target one person in a group and you cast like, I don't know, 10 of these things or four or five, like this is wrong, right? I casted six, all six of those swords are going to chase down what I targeted. So that's overkill and a waste of focus. So what you want to do is, you want to kind of target one guy, switch your target, have R3, and then push your right stick to change targets, and then cast your spells at a pace. That way, you can take advantage of the magical ability way better. But the key is though, get used to this. Cast them, understand there's a delay to casting, bait them into meleeing, make sure the spells end up behind them. This is the way to do it, and that's going to go a long way for you. One last thing. Casting also isn't very speedy, so beware of the window of opportunity you have because you don't have to really cast it right in front of the guy because, you know, they kind of follow your target, right? So cast them at a distance. If you try to cast them right in front like this, it's going to get you killed. So cast it and then move out of the way, right? Bait your enemy into some kind of movement and then they do very high damage as you can see there. And another benefit with having the staff in your offhand 
is that it allows you to access the impaling thrust skill with your sword or any ashes of war you equip but the impaling thrust comes by default so you don't have to get it and this is a very useful move so this is l2 or the skill button trigger while you have the sword in the right hand and the stab in the left hand and it causes a little bit of focus to cast this but the damage is extremely high and it's very good at boss fights as you can see me take down the tree sentinel with it and lastly you can also switch out of your staff and give yourself a shield which also comes by default for the prisoner starter class and this is great because eventually you will run out of magic so then you can switch to your shield which allows you to have a lot of parry ability and that's going to carry you over into the melee part of the fight as you have used up all your magic and because of this with the shield and the staff you can actually balance your uh, flask to suit the playstyle you want maybe more health or less magic or more magic less health and lastly with the shield you also can use the l2 ashes of war ability a good one to have is storm wall or you can really put anything on your shield to get in that extra skill because it allows you to do that right so that's a lot of flexibility with the prisoner and his attribute points allow him to do all of this effectively shield play with sword or staff play with sword you can also consider adding some ashes of war to your sword instead of using the thrust personally i like the thrust more but here you can see i was using the uh, storm wall ashes of uh, war ability and this one is a good stunning effect it would be good to fight these smaller kind of enemies but i do suggest keep the thrust because that's going to be very useful in the boss fight but against these smaller minion type of style though having a uh, your staff in the left hand and sword in the right and then using you know ashes of war skill with the sword is still very beneficial as it's gonna not use that much magic but it's gonna allow you to spam it a ton and it's still gonna help you in these kind of smaller encounters that's why the prisoner is so great Everything just works, right? You have enough focus to cast Ashes of War or to cast spells with your staff. And if you have to get into melee, he's got enough quick hitting actions. And also you can switch to shield for more protection and parry. That's a very well all around starting class and very good for, you know, beginners. So here is a full boss fight that we want to show you. This one, we kind of went in on it with a more magical approach. And with the prisoner, you can make a choice, you know, beforehand. Like if the boss, you want to do more melee and parry, I would suggest give yourself more, uh, HP flask but in this case because of the way this boss kind of fights I can really hurt him a ton with magic so I gave myself more magical flasks and just try not to engage him in melee because I know he will be good at that but he can't deal with these spells because he moves slow and his you know attacks are pretty telegraphic so I can dodge them while I'm just majorly damaging him with magic you can see I've done nothing but magical glimbator and more than half his health is already gone I only had to heal myself once and because I bought all of those uh, FP potions with me, or flask, I can just drink those and keep casting these swords like he stands no chance. Like there's no chance where he wins this fight because of the way I'm approaching it and because the prisoner build allows me to do so. I can even heal myself, switch the shield, and just parry him to finish him off just to make a point. So great starting class overall, very flexible. And because of the way it started out, you can continually to build them up this way. And if you end up want to do a little bit more melee, you can lean closer to dexterity and endurance. But if you lean a little bit more magic, you can then obviously put up more intelligence and mind. But because both skills are pretty even and laid out, you have a lot of equipment choices, spell choices. You can essentially access a lot of stuff that is available to you in the game. And you can do whichever one is effective for the specific boss fight you're fighting in. And you won't really be weak in anything because of that. Alright, so if you enjoyed this video, please add us a like and consider subscribing for more RPG content. As always, thanks for coming by and we look forward to speak to all of you again very soon.